never forget looking out the window at all the grey clouds and then on top it was all blue and I was amazed. I just thought, wow. And I just knew I wanted to fly one day. My father was in the Air Force when I was a little boy. Before I went to bed, I used to say, Dad, can you tell me a story about the Air Force? And he used to tell me about he was a crewman on a bomber. That really whet my appetite for flying. He used to take me to the Air Force cadets, and I used to crawl all over an aeroplane. It was called a vampire. New jet-propelled vampire. Still on the secret list, all we're allowed to say about it, is that it exceeds 500 miles an hour in level flight. The Vampire Jet, it's now considered a classic. It was just the first aeroplane I ever crawled on as a little boy. I just love the look of it. Back in uh, 1969, my father had to go to England. He was allowed to bring two of his four children, and I was one of them. We boarded a DC-9. I'd never been in a plane. It was my ninth birthday. And when we took off in the bad weather, I never forget looking out the window at all the grey clouds, and then on top it was all blue. And I was amazed. I just thought, wow, what's all this? You know, why is it blue? And, you know, I kept asking questions. Because it was my birthday, I went in the cockpit. They were talking to me about, you know, this button, that button, and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's when it all started. I could probably write a book on near-death experiences on an aeroplane. I've had an engine failure in a Cessna 172 over Lake Alexandrina and managed to glide to a paddock full of sheep where I missed all the sheep and landed safely. The engine had exploded and they put a new engine in it and actually flew it out of that field. Then I had a bunch of mates up. The engine started running really rough. Had to make an emergency landing in Adelaide Airport with virtually no power. They're two near-death experiences. Any guy that wants to be a pilot, they want to be a pilot. When you're a kid and you're on your bike and you're hanging around airports, watching planes, listening to pilots talking, that's when you know you've got to be a pilot. What a lot of people don't realise is it's very expensive. Like my mum used to say to me, Mark, why have you got a hobby of the gods? Why can't you just have a hobby riding motorbikes or something like that? But I had a hobby flying aeroplanes that cost thousands of dollars an hour. I got my commercial licence fairly late in my life and I work with a lot of young people that were educated at some pretty high power colleges around the country. Their parents were quite wealthy. They didn't pay a cent for their training, even though they had this urge to be a pilot. But they didn't have to do, like me, work at night, uh, work on weekends and then do a lesson. I think I appreciate it more than uh, if my parents paid for it. I got my seaplane endorsement shortly after I got my commercial licence because I just wanted to fly and I love boating as well. I work up in Top End and Queensland etc and end up in Fiji. Now working in Fiji was, a, Fiji is a developing country so it's not like here it's developing. Obviously we got paid very well. We were not in the developing part. Having to get a license in Fiji, like after getting one here, sitting exams and all that, that was difficult. The aircraft was different. A quite old aeroplane with a, a turbine engine. And then the conditions, you know, the windy conditions of Fiji. Fiji's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and it gets so windy. A lot of people don't realise that. Landing on water in 20, 30 knots, every landing was hard work compared to Australia. My eyes have seen some beautiful things, more than most people, and that's because of my flying career.